Welcome back. Uh, my show is designed, I guess, to have people on one, two, three times, and I think this is the third time we've been on, so people must, people must like Well, it. it's the only time that I've ever been invited back anywhere, so yeah, thank you. Normally, nobody invites me back anywhere. Okay, so yeah. do, I, do I just start questioning myself, Wendy? Yeah, yeah, I think you have to do a hard look at yourself. <laughs> you better get some. Either just mix with more people to get better guests, I don't know, but yeah. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to bring you back on was um, I went heavily on YouTube on this podcast and your episode has been the most successful one that we've we put out, beating Jim Penman of Jim's Mowing. Wow. Wow. You told me last night you mow lawns as well. I do mow lawns, so therefore I can actually beat him at that as well. I'm a pretty good lawn mower. It's about the only thing I can do. I am the worst handyman in the world. Um, at, like my wife has had to put up with this for a few decades, but even if there's just a loose screw on one of the hinges of the door, we've got to ring up MacGyver and just get him in because I, I don't know what to do with a hammer. The only thing that I'm half good at is this marketing side. Everything else, I'm just a hopeless human being. Mm-hmm. So well, I guess now you're saying, you're saying well, forget this, <laughs> forget this episode. I should have the garden right now. <laughs> <laughs> what, we're, what we're going to chat today about is the incentive-based marketing and getting people's eyes off the price because so many objections that we come in as business owners are that it's the price. Yeah. If we can do something that will flip it around and go, oh, geez, I get this and this, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I, I want to start with the story of you in a boardroom, um, the high execs, you came in and you threw a Happy Meal McDonald's toy on the table with these you know, suits and you're going, here it is. Yeah. Um, tell me about that. Story. Well, I had been to one too many Anthony Robbins seminars, I guess, and, uh, you know, he says, break the mold. Well, of course, you don't have to say that to me twice. I thought, well, that's a good idea. So it just means that, you know, you get their attention with some sort of wow factor. And my business, as you know, is called the Institute of Wow. So therefore, I guess if anyone's going to try the wow factor, I'm going to try it. And what had happened is that this building society called the Greater Building Society, they had contracted my consultancy services to have a look at how they could sell more home loans, basically. And so, um, look, they're lovely people, but it's a bank, okay? So therefore, they're pretty conservative. And um, and although I must say in a boastful sort of way, I think I contributed to taking the brand to be a bit cheeky, a little bit Virgin Airlines, you know, a bit cheeky. And we took it up to the banks, if you like. Um, that it was, it was, I was a speedboat dragging an anchor, right? <laughs> they, it, they're a building society, so they were very conservative. So I thought, oh, this Anthony Robbins thing, break the mold. What, what the hell am I going to do? And as it turned out, I was there for two or three months and I did my time in motion study and I could see that their marketing was pretty bland, let's say. They would have billboards on the side of the road, you know, the greater, you know, loves you, come and get a home loan. They'd have ads on the side of buses and the backs of taxis. But there was nothing that I would call, and you know, direct response marketing. And I haven't seen anybody um, yet take down um, a logo off the back of a football jumper and go, I'm going to get my home loan from those people. So it was a challenge to teach them direct response marketing. And so after three months, when I could see that they were doing everything that every other bank was doing, and yet they were a challenger brand, so they needed to do things differently from the big four banks. I thought I'll try Anthony Robbins' thing. I was doing some TV commercials for a travel company at the time, which was a, a wholesale travel company, typical morning TV, Kerry and Kenley stuff. And I knew that you could get holidays for pretty much you know, half price. So I said to the building society, um, why don't you forget price discounting as in a honeymoon rate uh, in, with your interest rates and why don't you just give people a free holiday? Um, but before I did that, I had to get their attention. So, yep, Anthony Robbins style, I walked into the boardroom, there's a whole bunch of people with suits, and uh, I threw a Happy Meal toy on the table because I was there to present how they should market their bank on going. And, of course, they knew I was a bit cheeky by that stage, and they said, oh, yeah, okay, very funny, very funny, Mr. John DeWay, what, what, what's going on here? I pulled out a $100 note. I said, you guys are all bankers, so therefore you'd recognise the value of this. I'll give $100 to anyone here if you can tell me the price of the Happy Meal toy. I said, who has a child or grandchildren? I'll put the hand up. And the Happy Meal toy box, the Happy Meal box is sitting in the middle of the boardroom table. I said, 100 bucks to anyone who tells me the price of it. They never got within a dollar. They had no clue, and yet they bought a lot of Happy Meals. And I said, do you understand that the whole you know, metaphor behind that is that we take and McDonald's took our eyes off the price? And, you know, I explained to them I had six kids, and this was some years ago, so they were still young, my kids. And I said, we spent six gazillion dollars on Happy Meals, but my wife and I could not tell you what they cost because it's all about the free toy. You know, it's interesting because I've explained this story to friends after explaining uh, the podcast, and one of them, we, we were a kid, he's gone, but 
the even more interesting thing about this is the kid doesn't eat, even eat the food. No. They just want the toy. No. And, and they, they just did. want to go to McDonald's. Yeah, I'm telling you that with the six screaming kids that we had in the Drago for many years, <laughs> the hamburger, well, they'd take one bite and that was it. It was all about the Disney toy. So it's amazing. And when I tell that story from time to time, um, you know, business owners do... You know, those who are entrepreneurial do take away a very clear understanding that it's not about price discounting. You've got to decide whatever price discount you are willing to give up, turn that into a happy meal toy. And whether it's a carton of beer or whether it's a movie ticket or dining voucher or whatever it may be, you know, stop price discounting. Because, you know, if the Greater Building Society had continued to price discount on their interest rates, and let's just say the time was 4.5% and they went for 4.4, what do you think the Commonwealth Bank's going to do? 4. Yeah. So the hardware store who's opposite from Bunnings, if he tries to take Bunnings on price, they're going to smash him. But if he actually says, look, with every wheelbarrow, I'm going to give you a pitchfork or a free shovel, they can't match that. That takes six months with a committee meeting to the head office of Bunnings before they could eat. So he would have six months free time. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. Price discount, they'll beat him in a heartbeat. You said to me last night, um, you make big businesses small again. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> yeah. was a, and let me say no, to you, no, no, no. we're having a few drinks and there was a, yeah. yeah, but what, I'm, what I meant by that is it's the decision-making that's small. Yeah. Right, because the decision-making be quick and small decisions lead to big outcomes. And that's what I took, oh, that's what you took, that's what I took it as. You took, I was really being sarcastic because yeah. we were there with another speaker and he was boasting and most speakers and coaches, of course, a show off some yeah. exception. And he was saying, oh, yeah, I take small businesses and make them big. And I said, oh, he said, well, I, I change businesses. And I said, how do you change businesses? He said, oh, you know, basically I take small businesses and make them big. I said, we're the same business. I change businesses. And he said, well, how? I said, I take big businesses and make them small. <laughs> I had one too many beers. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. But I, I took it as the incentive-based marketing that you do in order for someone to successfully implement that campaign, they need to act faster. Yep. They yep. can't sit in committee meetings and boardrooms and do it yep. all that. So... Can you explain to me what, for someone who doesn't know what incentive based marketing is, what, what is it? I can explain that too because I know everything. I've told you that too. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I know. yeah. yeah absolutely. Just ask my wife and she'll, yeah. roll, she'll roll her eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, look, and, and seriously, I mean, look, the way I look at business, you know, having been around since you know, the 1840s now, so therefore I've, I've been involved with quite a few hundred, hundred, hundreds of businesses. As business is pretty simple, it's the people who run them that are complicated. <laughs> so it's pretty simple. You've got to take their eyes off the price and uh, you've got to, you know, have good margin. And uh, when you do take their eyes off the price, there's a pretty good chance you have a good margin. Um, and incentive-based marketing is, um, as the name, you know, sort of, I guess, implies, is all about providing someone with uh, an incentive. I call it a Happy Meal toy uh, that's going to get them off the fence. Because let's face it, it doesn't matter what we're buying. Uh, we're all you know, sitting on the fence for a certain amount of time. So to get them off the fence, uh, how easy is, is it to say, look, if you act by boom, whatever that time period is, we will give you an extra whatever it is and a, a toy. So, you know, like Kellogg's have been doing it you know, since I was a kid at school. There's always a toy or a CD or something in the cereal box. Uh, Amazon uh, have been doing it very well with their Prime membership. If you become a member of the Prime Club, then you get free shipping and you get free movies and free music and all sorts of stuff. The little coffee shop down the road, for God's sake, does it. So, you know, like if someone's watching or listening to this and says, oh, I just can't do that, you know. Yes, you can. I mean, have a look at the little coffee shop down the road. I mean, they have the little coffee cart and when you get nine coffees, you get the 10th one for free. So that's an incentive. Yeah. So can you give me a, a specific example of incentive-based marketing that you've deployed in a company, and it could be the greater, um, and we could go into the Jerry Seinfeld, which I, I think would be a good answer. I also like the beer one um, the, that sold mm. grass, but maybe a, another example that you have of incentive-based marketing that is really, and then what are the, the, the figures behind that that it's actually been successful. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, let me touch on the turf one because that is a good one that when I've been speaking at conventions or what have you, and I use that as an example, I've heard feedback from people weeks or months later who say, look, I've taken that and used it in a different way for my business. So it's probably a good one to use as an example because whoever's watching or listening to this could maybe take something from it and use it for their business. It's a turf farm on the Gold Coast and they're up in the Tambourine Mountain. Uh, they're called ALC Turf. And uh, really there's... Probably no other product in the world that's closer to being a Me Too 
than a home loan because if you get a hundred thousand dollars from Westpac, it's the same hundred thousand dollars you're going to get from the Greater Burning Society. So if you don't give them an incentive to come to you, it's only going to be the interest rate that makes the difference, isn't it? Well, turf comes pretty much close to that. I mean, grass is grass is grass. I mean, you know, this guy's got sort of water grass on, you know, three acres or sorry, 103 acres of it. The guy across the road got the same on your place. The grass is grass. And so I visited this particular guy. He happened to come on as a private coaching client. And uh, I drove up to the Tambourine Mountains and it's a lovely guy, John Keller, who his name is. And he said to me, uh, listen, I've got to get rid of this grass because we, we want to replant in time for spring. And I said, oh, okay, right, how much grass have you got? And I'm in the middle of a mountain range. And he points to the mountains way over there and the mountains way over there. He said, six kilometres of grass. <laughs> I said, what? He said, as far as the eye can see, that's my grass. He said, we've got to move it fast. Wow, okay. So I said to him, who's your target audience? The first question, Tim, that you and I would ask any decent marketer. And he said, well, it's not mum and dad's because they're going to buy one front yard's worth of grass. If we're after landscapers who are doing two or three or ten homes at a time. I went, okay. Right on. And he said, look, I've seen your ads on TV for the Greater Building Society because it was around about that era. And he said, I can see that, you know, get a home and I get a free holiday. Is there something like that that we can do? And I said, there might be, but, you know, the purchase price for your grass is not enough to include a free holiday at the time. So I said, what do you think landscapers want? Because at the end of the day, you've got to find an incentive that suits the target audience. Well, the toy with McDonald's is perfect. The kids press to power, mummy, mummy, daddy, daddy, I want the happy meal. Well, of course, it's perfect. So I said to him, uh, don't you think beer would be good? And he said, uh, for landscapers, yeah. I mean, let's face it, 99.9% men, you know. So that's what we did. We came out with a campaign and we sent out a mailer because landscapers are not you know, real tech savvy normally, so therefore we sent out direct mail, but we also sent out an email and text and said for every one home's worth of grass, which will be 500 square metres for a front yard and a back yard, for every 500 square metres of grass, we'll give you a carton of Crown Lager. Now, tradies are normally used to probably drinking four eggs or two, so Crown Lager was, you know, yeah. Um, he rings me six days after we've sent out the campaign and uh, he said, we've got a problem. And I thought, oh, God, I hope it worked. What do you mean we've got a problem? He said, no more grass. He said, I don't have any more grass. I said, what? He said, the whole six kilometres is gone. He said, this has been so successful that even the pain in the backside clients that I used to have that would say, how much? And he'd say $5.50 a square metre. They go, I can get it down the road for $5.20. And he'd have to drop his price. It was a race to the bottom. He said, the biggest pain in the backside that he had rang up and said, I want 18 homes worth of grass. I need the 18 cartons of beer by Friday. I don't care about the grass when it gets here, but I'm having a party on Friday. So... So the Happy Meal toy overtook the grass. <laughs> well, so, that's the thing, because the Happy Meal toy from McDonald's overtakes the food as well. You got it. And it said, you know, with the landscapers, so don't think, if you're listening or watching this, that, oh, well, you know, my audience is too sophisticated. They wouldn't be a rubbish. That's complete and utter rubbish. We lived at St. Creek Cove for a little while. Uh, I moved up from Sydney to the Gold Coast, and when we were building our house, um, at keep in mind we had six kids, so I had to build a house that had a few bedrooms in it. We stopped at Sanctuary Cove for 12 months whilst we were building. Now, Sanctuary Cove, for anyone who might be watching this, of course, is a gated, very upmarket community. Um, my wife killed me because she sent me up a few weeks in advance to look for someone, to, somewhere to rent for 12 months, and of course, you know, I don't have, the, I don't know that they have your money. I just went straight to Hollywood yeah. and Sanctuary Cove. So I was in trouble for 12 months. But anyway, we lived in this very nice gated community for 12 months. And I ended up having a couple of clients who were restaurants in the, uh, in the village there. And I gave them this sort of advice. And so therefore, they would give incentives. And that would be, you know, come and dine on a slow night. That might be a Monday or Tuesday night. And we'll give you an incentive as in a free bottle of wine and free beautiful dessert that was, you know, created in one of the MasterChef TV programs, we're going to give you the grand final dessert for free. I jammed their restaurants on Monday and Tuesday night. Now, these are rich people. Century Cove, you know, we're talking homes that are two and three and five and $10 million, and they reacted to a free incentive. So don't tell me that, oh, well, our, our market is a bit unlike, you know, our audience is too, too sophisticated for that. That's rubbish. No, everyone likes value. Yep. And what you're doing is you're value stacking an offer to make it go, well, I wanted to buy this anyway, but now I'm also getting this other thing. You got it. And Tim, let me say this to you, is that the most successful incentives are ones where the, um, the, the gift, if you like, has no relationship whatsoever to the product. And the reason I say that is because I've been a member of ADMA for quite some time. That's the Australian Direct Marketing Association. And they have their Logie Awards every year to you know, give out the most successful you know, um, sort of promotional incentives. And the ones that generally win are 
ones where the Happy Meal toy, if you like, has nothing to do with the product. So if you think about the toy, it's got nothing to do with the hamburgers. You know, if you think about, likewise, with Kellogg's and with, you know, with, with um, uh, most of the successful ones, the actual giveaway isn't really. So, for example, Sushi Train, they give you points, but when you actually want to cash them in, it's the same as a discount. So don't get me wrong, it's still better than, not, than doing a discount, but it's just that you get extra sushi. My view is it would be better if they got a movie pass. So this is a really good tactic, but why then do so many people just default to discounting? Is it because it's the path of least resistance and it's easier to just oh, I'll give a 20% discount? Well, it's funny, you know, because uh, if I'm doing seminars, uh, my little wow factor to get their attention uh, and to make them understand I'm down to earth and I'm not a typical seminar speaker who's going to flog something that they don't need at the end of it, uh, I'll say to them, you know, like, Seriously, there's a disease out there called diconitis because there's so many business owners that are just, you know, going straight to price discounting when it makes no sense at all. The hardware store is not going to beat Bunnings, okay? If you're a local little supermarket, you're not going to beat Woolworth. So if you're a challenger brand, and most of your viewers or listeners would be challenger brands, in other words, they're doing less than a million dollars turnover, then you've got to be a challenger. And, you know, the best example of that uh, is, uh, I'll come back to Dickett Otis in a minute, but yeah. uh, Richard Branson, when he came into Australia, Qantas pretty much owned the whole thing. And his first campaign in here was brilliant. It was keep the air fair. And, of course, you know, we knew what the word fair really meant. Uh, and so he was sort of inferring that Qantas had been ripping us off for like the last 20 years. And that was a great challenger brand tactic, keep the air fair. He didn't say Qantas were ripping us off, but, of course, if you look, you know, behind that, you think, hang on, keep the affair. What has Qantas been charging us, you know? Um, look, the reason that I think most business owners, all jokes aside, my dickhead owners jokes aside, that, look, it's just easy, that's all. Because they're sitting um, with their business partner or their husbands or their wives, and they're saying, look, we've got this bucket load of stock in the warehouse. We're going to turn that into cash. What's the easiest way to do that? Oh, I know, we'll price discount. Um, and that's fine to do that once or twice or three times a year because, you know, you have to turn stock into cash. Or if you're a service industry like a plumber or electrician or, you know, any tradesperson, then, you know, every now and again you've got to, you know, make sure you pay that that month's rent. So, therefore, you might say, okay, I'll have a price discount. But don't make it the thing that you use all the time. What I think is that you should consider is use price discounting when you have to one or two or three times a year to move stock. But for the most part, think outside the square and provide people with a value add or what we call an incentive because if you can take their eyes off the price, guess what? You've got more margin. The Greater Building Society, which I know you're going to ask me about in a moment, but their very successful 12-year promotion of get a home loan, get a free holiday, do you know throughout that 12 years they were just about the highest interest rate in the world? Yeah, so no more. So, yeah, let's have to get into that campaign because I know people really loved it from last time, so let's go over that again. you got Jerry Seinfeld to come out and do the ads for you. Um, I love the story because Jerry wasn't, does Jerry know that you had Robin first? No, no, he doesn't know. I wouldn't tell him that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Robin Williams we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, okay. Yeah. Um, no, no, that's all right. I don't think Jerry will be watching this. Yeah, yeah. well, exactly, <laughs> no, 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 good point. So yeah, um, tell me about the story of getting Jerry Seinfeld to do an, a TV ad for you and then go into how that campaign went and, and yeah, yeah. The whole and of course, you know, having worked for three years with Jerry Seinfeld, I've never mentioned the 21 team, I've never milked it, of course. <laughs> there's a few, there's a few. But when, well, we were saying last night, you, you went to Jerry and you said, um, oh, Jerry, why don't you have a website? You've been you making money from TV. And he goes, do you think I need to be making money from that? And, yeah. And then he goes, I looked at your website, so I'm all over it. He's on my website more than I am. Yeah. No, I've milked the daylights out of it. And a few mates of mine have said to me, that was 10 years ago. How long are you going to milk that? It's till I die. Yeah. <laughs> like, why wouldn't you? If you got to work with someone like that for a few years, I mean, of course you're going to milk it. Well, I mean, I milked it as yeah. well. And yeah. The reason that the last episode was most successful is I whacked that photo up with you and you and yeah. Jerry here. Yeah. Jerry Seinfeld sells home loans with happy meal toys. You got it. There you yeah. go. And, full marks, yeah. Yeah. and uh, that's exactly what I've been doing as well to bring attention to me because you know at the end of the day whilst I might think I'm important there's not that many others that might think that way so put what's on for next to me and all of a sudden yeah good chance you, you look important um yeah but how it came about is that I had developed for the building society a campaign uh, to take everyone's eyes off the interest rate and when we kicked off this interview and you said well tell the story about throwing the happy meal box you know in the boardroom table when the um 
the management of the grader said to me, okay, smart Alec, what's that all about? I said, well, you know, I'll give $100 to anyone that tells me what the hell your costs. And of course, they couldn't get there. I said, so therefore, McDonald's have taken your eyes off the price. What you need to do is the same thing for your home loans. And they went, okay, how do we do that? And that's what I said to them, look, stop doing the honeymoon rate, which was a 1% discount for the first year, like every bank had, and turn that into a free holiday. And so I introduced them to the you know, travel company, and that's how it worked. So for about five years, they had get a home loan, um, get a free holiday, no Seinfeld. Okay, Seinfeld wasn't around at that time. We're talking billions of extra dollars worth of home loans. I mean, the idiot that you're talking to at the moment, instead of charging a consultancy fee, if I had just said to them, give me 0.1% of all the extra home loans, and, uh, I, I would have bought Fiji. <laughs> you know, like it was, I was just an idiot to um, yeah, charge consultancy fees. But anyway, they're a lovely company and a very good client. And I was with them for 12 years, but for the first five years, it was get a home loan, get a free holiday. So we marketed on you know social media and TV and it went nuts. Uh, and around about five years in, the management said to me, look, we've scooped up a lot of the low-lying fruit uh, and building societies tend to appeal to a working class audience. So therefore we scooped up a lot of that audience. They said, do you think we can go maybe to middle white collar management? We, level, get, we go up a level and try and steal some of the bank's customers. I said, yeah, but we're going to have to look at this a little bit differently. And they said, well, okay, go away and come up with something. A friend of mine at the time had just finished doing the Billy Connolly ING ads, and I asked him how did he do that. He gave me the tips of how they got Billy Connolly and all that sort of stuff. So I just did the same thing. And before I went and pitched to anyone, we put out a survey amongst the members and non-members and said, look, you know, the Greater Building Society is a pretty cheeky sort of brand. I created a, a bit of a virgin-esque brand for them. Who would be a good spokesperson? Obviously a comedian. I was hoping it would be Bert Newton or Rove because that would be easier to get. Up comes Robin Williams, Jim Carrey, Jerry Seinfeld. I thought I'd dug my own hole here. This is ridiculous. So I flew over to New York and met with um, Robin Williams' people because he was number one on the survey. So uh, anyways, it turned out we scored him. And uh, I remember boasting to the Building Society, I'm jumping on a plane from New York, I'm coming home, build a statue. And they said, oh, Robin Williams, no, me, I got Robin Williams. Right? <laughs> and God was watching and saw my head was too big. And by the time I got off the plane in Sydney, Robin Williams' man, uh, manager rang and said, well, he's just got a movie, he can't do it. So anyway, we then chased Seinfeld. And uh, I was a bit of a nuisance because I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't, I chased him, I chased his manager, George Shapiro. I, I was a squeaky door. And eventually, after three or four months worth of heavy chasing, he said yes. And when I met him for the first time in New York at his office, I said, mate, why did you say yes to this? You've got more money than God. You know, like, why would you, you know? And he said, uh, well, two reasons. Number one, I love Australian sense of humour. And you've just asked me to take the mickey out of banks. Well, that's what I do, you know. And he said, number two, I thought you'd never go away. <laughs> <laughs> And the rest is history. We uh, then had Jerry for three years uh, to be the spokesman. And you get Jerry Seinfeld to come on TV and say, get a home run, get a free holiday. Whatever the results were in that first five years, triple them again. Because it was a wow factor on top of wow factor. It just went nuts. Yeah. And the, the story you said, uh, we were having a beer last night. Dad, but look, Tim's got an alcohol problem. So um, <laughs> he's from Melbourne. I'm on the Gold Coast. So we, yeah, we, no, I was Melbourne here. We, like, we yeah, well, yeah, of course. So therefore, last night, we were yeah. just having a few tall stories. And um, and I said to him, yeah, at one stage when it was off camera, we were just having a coffee and what have you. Imagine what a thrill it is to be able to work with Jerry Seinfeld. And I just said to him, mate, you don't have a website. And uh, this was the second year into the three years. And I had him all over my website because obviously I'm going to show off like crazy. And uh, he said, no, I don't. And I said, but imagine if you could sell a with sign for a caps and T-shirts and this, that, and the other. And he says, he had ready glasses on it. He was like the school headmaster slapping. He goes, JD, do I look like I need to sell too many caps and T-shirts? I said, I'm sorry. And he said, besides, why would I do the website? He said, I've looked at yours. I'm on there more than you. <laughs> I said, oh, touche, touche. Yeah, that's really good. So... The reason that campaign was successful, Jerry Seinfeld got the attention of yep. people. Yep. So here's TV ad, Jerry Seinfeld holding a microphone being funny. Yep. So the creative of that ad was really successful because then it would have created shareability. Yep. Office room talk, oh, have you seen the Jerry Seinfeld stuff? Yep. And then, but then what actually happened is the creative can only take it so far. You need to have the offer to back it up. You got it. And then the offer, that's what. That's what do that. You got it. Yeah, good, mate. Uh, and look, the direct response marketing, which is what the Institute of Wow is, that's what our whole mantra is. If I'm dealing with businesses largely that are doing less than a million turnover, 
they can't sponsor the Brisbane Broncos. They can't sponsor the Commonwealth Games or the Olympic Games. They can't do any of that sort of stuff. Um, and, and also I say to them, listen, you tell me, when was the last time that you saw a logo on the back of an NRL or AFL jumper and then you thought, oh, I'll go and buy that product? You know, it's just like, they're, they're, what was the Castle movie? They're dreaming, you know, like it's just crazy. But big businesses can throw money up against the wall like that because the marketing manager is not going to be measurable in terms of, you just gave $5 million to the Essendon Football Club. How many more of whatever's did we sell? Yeah, they're not. They're, they've got different goals, different KPIs. They they care about eyeballs, seeing them, and, and it's just you got so it. many small businesses think, oh, I've got to be like Coca-Cola. Yeah. I've got to be everywhere. I've got to be, I've, I've literally had these conversations yeah. with people. And I say the reason Coca Cola can do that is because they've got a budget that lets them do that. Okay. But they didn't start there back in the 1800s yeah. when they started their business. Yeah. But now they've got the budget to give them that ability of owning presence. But us businesses turning over a million dollars, yeah. we don't have that no. ability. But no. they try to. And well, it's because, money. it's because they're given the wrong information. Seriously, I mean, the thing is, is that even when they sponsor the local little basketball team that their son or their daughter plays. I saw one yesterday in client's office. Did you? Yeah, he sponsored a player. Yeah. Well, see, with six kids, we've been to a few Saturday morning basketball games and cricket and whatever else. I've never seen a parent there with a pen and paper going, "Uh, number six, could you slow down? I want to get the butcher's number off the back of your jersey. Don't see that. It's just like dickheaditis. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's silly, silly throwing money at stuff like that. Unless you get the name and contact details of the parents of those kids. And then you start using that list and that's why you bought the sponsor. It's all about, you know, um, collecting data, of course, and then, uh, you know, marketing that data. I, when I was doing the Greater Building Society Consultancy, it was almost a bit crazy because I was not a full-time employee. I was charging my consultancy fee. But just about any sponsor request that came in, they'd say, what do you think? I mean, no, what do you think? No. I've just said no straight away because sponsorship to me is a waste of money unless you've got the data. So therefore, the Greater Building Society's head office is in Newcastle. And um, although they had a national presence, it was in Newcastle. So the Newcastle Knights rugby league team came and asked for a sponsorship. I forget what it was, $100,000 to put your logo on the shorts. Yeah, on the shorts. Yeah. And I said, no, we don't do any $100,000 sponsorships. And uh, they said, oh, right, uh, what do you do? I said, no, $200,000, we only do $200,000 sponsorships. So we'll give you $200,000 and I'm taking the, you know what? And the guy from the football club goes, well, we can do with that. You know, he thought he'd just hit pay dirt. He hadn't realised my sarcasm at that stage. And I said, yeah, only one condition. And he said, what's that? I said, you just give us the name and contact details of the 20,000 people that come to your game every fortnight. He went, did you get any credits in the background? He went, oh. I said, mate, there's no use. When was the last time you were watching TV in a sport? And you go, oh, I, that logo on the shorts, I'm going to get a home loan from them. I said, you know, the only value that we can get from this, and same thing, we had the New South Wales junior cricket um, mob come to us, and they had 50,000 kids playing cricket right throughout New South Wales. Said the same thing, you give me all their parents' names and emails and phone numbers uh, with access to them, right, and we, you, we'll give you the money that you want. But yeah. was, they don't. And I think they, they've started doing that. So I guess um, I can see the benefit of if you've got the budget and you do sponsor, but you've got to use it. You can't just buy the corporate suite and let it sit there or, or put the thing. What Amart Furniture, I've got my pack from Essendon Football Club as a, a member, um, and what they've started to do is you get your pack, but then you also get an incentive. Yep. yep. Here's, and sadly, it's a discount, right? It's so so they wasted yep. their... Yep. Here's instead a, of an autograph. Instead of an autograph. Like, here's 20% off Amart yep. Furniture, right? So they're starting to do incentive-based sponsorship. Yeah. But it's... Too late. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too little, too late. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were in a restaurant last night and, you know, Tim and I and about 25 other coaches and speakers and, you know, podcasters and so forth were there. And um, I'm guessing there was quite a few thousand dollars spent, not just with our group, but then another X thousand dollars. Um, big restaurant. We all left and they had not got our details. Yeah. You see, the crazy part about it is if I can preach to many cafes and restaurants as I like, I've been speaking at some of the conventions for the hospitality industry, and I'll say to them, I'm going to give you a piece of advice now that will double your business if you follow it. I don't make any money out of it. I'm just going to give it to you. But I guarantee you that 99% of you won't do it. And then they say, well, what is it? What is it? I said, simply just give them a little piece of paper when you're giving them the check, not an app, okay, because we're talking with people who've really got money and probably over 45. So therefore, just give them a little piece of paper that says, win dinner for 10 of your friends at the end of the month. They fill it in, and I know the restaurants that have followed this, 92% of people fill it in, so don't tell me, oh, people wouldn't fill in a bit of paper, yes, they do. And then every afternoon at 3 o'clock, just simply text 
a few hundred of whatever the many thousands that you collect and say, look, Chef Pierre's got a special deal on tonight. You know, it's a lobster tail meal for two for a special price. Obviously, they're going to spend more money on that when they get in because they're going to buy wine and this and the other. Um, and you will fill your restaurant every single night by sending out a text message in the afternoon. I, I, we have a client that does it. It's called the Lobster Cave in Melbourne. So I know the Lobster Cave. Yeah. yeah. And he used to be a client of the company I was working for. Bill Ferg, really super duper entrepreneur. He did this and I was there one day with him at his office at the, uh, underneath a 150 seat restaurant. He calls in his you know, secretary and said, how many seats have we got full? She said, a half. He said, we've got 75 to full, so send out one of JD's. By the way, I'm saying J- John DeWise by now. Yeah. Yeah. So he says, send out one of John DeWise, JD's text messages. And she said, right. So she goes into her office and she sends out a text message to just three or 400 of his many yeah. thousands. Office that's upstairs. Yep. Yeah. And uh, she walked in 10 minutes later. The deal was Chef Pierre has got a special you know, lobster tail meal for two tonight for $68. Everyone spends 200 by the way, but they get in on this. And uh, she comes in 10 minutes later, no advertising on the side of a bus, no Facebook, no, no. She just said that we're booked out in 10 minutes by sending out a text message to a data, a smidgen of the database. He does that every afternoon at three o'clock because I get a few every now and again. He's the only restaurant in the world that's booked 100% of the year every single night. Yeah. Just yeah. simple. It's really simple. And that's about getting a list. The money's in the list. Yeah. Getting a list, sending it out, having the, having the, the creativity to come up with something like that. Yeah. Yeah, well, then doing you, it. You did. I mean, getting the list, of course, is, is, is you know, number A, but number B is being creative and, and, and offering them something that they're going to respond to. And, you know, I know where this conversation is heading because you're going to say to me, okay, what's the number one incentive? Yeah. After the Building Society experience and recognising that the reason that was so successful, because keep in mind, it ran for five years before Seinfeld got involved. So it was very, very successful before you put a superstar onto it. And it ended up running for 12 years. It only stopped when I left. I, I left that consultancy to go out and do the seminar circuit and all that sort of stuff. And then the new people who came in decided, oh, I think we'll just go back to price discounting. Well, I won't even tell you what's happened. Yeah, yeah we talked about that on the last show. <laughs> we talked about that on the last show. And that's the, that's the dickhead I had. Sort of, oh, they bought someone else in. No, let's go back to it. No. Yeah. Like, so yeah. incentive-based marketing, um, how is it? And I'll get to what's the best incentive-based. But how is it different? than a giveaway or a raffle or sweepstakes. You are talking to someone who's probably, definitely Australia's, but possibly up there in the top five of the world um, um, experiencing contests, okay? And I know that sounds a bit wanky to say that, but I did all the scratch bingos for Rupert Murdoch's newspapers over the 90s, uh, likewise with Fairfax, Women's Day magazines. I did the big Channel 9 bingo games. Uh, I did, you know, scratch tickets for your blockbusters and your video eases and your Westfield shopping towns and 7-Elevens and all of those companies. So we were turning over quite a number of millions of dollars in the 90s doing just that contest after contest after contest. And we made our money out of producing the scratch tickets, okay? I would never run another... Um, contest in my life ever again Uh, and the reason I wouldn't is because you buy you get in other words like McDonald's you buy the meal and you get the toy so you buy you get blitzes you buy and you might win can you imagine if McDonald's said to you buy Happy Meal and one in every ten boxes there'll be a toy (laughs) you will win a toy Uh, or you know spend X dollars with this and you might win a toy because every time I I'm driving around a partner and she sees the billboard of a competition she goes oh that looks great Oh, but I never win anything, so yeah. I'm not going to enter. I mean, when was the last time you entered a contest? Never. Yeah, I think yeah. my last time I entered was 1872 or something. I mean, I've never yeah. entered a contest. And you also get low-quality people as well because they just want to win something. What we a call current it. affair bloody runs stories on this, like, one woman every two years, the fact that she's won all this stuff because she's entered competitions. We affectionately, That's not a marketing lead. We affectionately could... No, it's not. We affectionately call them, uh, refer to them as prize pigs. Um, because, yeah, no, seriously, I mean, the thing is, is that... Um, I walked down the supermarket aisle and because being a bit of a marketing know-all, I just have a snigger because you can see on all of the various products, you know, chance to win a trip to Fiji, chance to win a refrigerator, chance to... And I'm thinking to myself, you've got to understand, look, the only contest that I suggest people run is an insured prize contest. So therefore, win $100,000 or win five hundred or a million. And we do plenty of that. Okay, so that my, you know, the Institute of Wow, we do lots and lots of these uh, insured prices. So I can get a million dollars uh, from one of the insurance companies for around about $15,000. Okay, so then you can say, you know, come into my uh, business and spend X dollars and you get a ticket into the million dollar draw. 
Now that has got some traction, but if it's not a big prize like a hundred or five hundred thousand or a million dollars, don't bother doing it because seriously, I mean, you know, these days even win a car is not what it used to be. But if you actually just focus on, you know, forget about the contest thing, just you buy, you get, I mean, ask yourself, if you are asked, you buy and you might be in the draw, and you'll be in the draw with a chance to win a trip to Fiji versus you buy, you go to Fiji. <laughs> And then that's the funny part about it. When I was selling the whole concept to the grader about get a home, I get a free holiday, one of the management said to me, oh, JD, look, God love you, but we've done all that before. And I went, I've just checked all of your history. It's pretty boring. I think you've done anything like this before. Seriously, you're a bag. You're boring. And he said, no, no, we did about three years ago. It was get a home loan and you're in the draw to win a trip to Disneyland. I said, no, 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 you misunderstood what I'm saying. This one is get a home loan. You go to Disneyland. And you could see their eyes became the size of saucepans. They went, what? How does this work? I said, you don't give out the 1% honeymoon rate, which on a $500,000 loan for the first year is five grand. You give the five grand to the travel company and they'll give you a 10 grand holiday. And the penny dropped. They went, oh, you get a home loan. You don't go in for a chance to win Fiji. You go to Fiji. Yes. And that's the thing. So that is incredibly successful. I want to lead into now, you do this now for small to medium businesses and the best incentive based marketing, especially after what we've been through for the last two years, would be a holiday. Of course. Yeah. So your program you basically get people you buy my product and we'll give you a holiday. Yeah, Tell me about happened? that. Tell me about you. Yeah. Yeah, what's happened, uh, Tim, is about two and a half years ago I got contacted by a company out of America, which is a travel company. And they said, Listen, um, someone told us to give you a, a ring, um, and it was a mutual a colleague, and uh, they said, we've looked at what you did with that building society some years earlier, and uh, we saw the sign for the thing, so it was pretty easy to Google and find. You seem to have half a clue with this marketing thing with incentives. Um, we're a travel company. We've been able to secure four-star hotels globally, um, and we get the rooms from them near enough for free, because for around about um, 40 weeks out of 52 weeks of the year, in other words, outside of school vacations, hotels generally run at about a 30% vacancy rate. And if they've got a 30% of their rooms vacant, they're still paying for air conditioning and cleaning and all the overheads, but they don't have anyone in there paying the room tariff. They may as well give that to us to put into a promotion that we sell to businesses and fill those rooms with freebie guests in the hope that those guests will spend money on food and beverage at the cafes and the restaurants and, you know, room service and cocktails by the pool. I went, oh, brilliant. This was brilliant. And they said, listen, can you create a package whereby we can sell this to businesses? And it's a win-win. The business has you know, a happy meal toy that they could never, ever possibly negotiate themselves. These are all four-star hotels. You're talking in Overtels and your Sofitels and your Riches and all that sort of stuff. So they're not, you know, Mount Druid Caravan Park, right? And uh, how about you put this package together? And if it works in Australia, um, then you can bring it into America and the UK, which is what we've just done. Uh, so that, that was it. And just about three or four months before COVID, we set it up. Um, we advertised it on Facebook to business owners and said, look, how would you like a Happy Meal toy, which is just crazy. We will give you these four-day, three-night holidays in Australia and New Zealand. Um, and in Fiji, it's five days. In Bali, it's eight, would you believe, eight days holiday. We'll give these to you that are worth $1,000 or more for $97. We got smashed, absolutely smashed, because people would buy a unit of 50 holidays from us because obviously there's a minimum quantity at $97, so they give us $4,850, but they get 50 times a $1,000 value. So they're getting $50,000 worth of holidays. It's just nuts. And they use them to sell stuff. So if you're a furniture store, you'd say, buy a loud suite off me, and normally that loud suite might be, let's say, $1,000. If they put a 10% discount sign outside, I don't think anyone's going to rush in, not with Groupon being 50%. But if they say buy a lounge suite and we'll give you a free four-day holiday in Australia or eight-day holiday in Bali, um, then it'll still only cost them the same as 10%, but do you think it might be rocket fuel? Yeah. So what's happened is that over the two years throughout the COVID, um, we did, even then, because we pivoted and made all the holidays in Australia rather than Fiji and Bali and Phuket and everywhere else, uh, we still did okay. I mean, there was a few months there when state lockdowns, of course, you know. But um, now... Yeah, yeah, the last month was our biggest month ever. Um, and, you know, if you think about incentives at the moment, you think, okay, what would be the best Happy Meal toy I could give anyone to buy my service or, or product? I, I think a holiday might be it after what we've all been through. Yeah. 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 What about the person who's like, oh, my product, if I gave a holiday to someone, you know, um, 
it's not sort of we touched on a little bit before it's like oh it's not my brand it's not my business like uh, it, it wouldn't make sense it would feel cheap in yeah. a sense right yeah what do you say to that person normally you should go and seek help for dickheaditis yeah <laughs> Seriously, yeah. look, the reason holidays work more than anything else is because they're universally appealing to both sexes and all ages. We did a lot of research with the Greater Building Society, so I'm very grateful because now I'm making money out of it, but, you know, the Greater Building Society, whilst I might have thought, gee, I wish I was getting a piece of the action because I could see what the holiday did to the homelands, I have to say, because it was a big business, it's Australia's 250th biggest business, right? So it's, a big, it's not as big as the Commonwealth Bank, but it's big. Yeah. So we could do a lot of research. And when we did the research and found out, because you know, we gave away 3D TVs for five minutes until we found out that didn't work. You know, 3D TVs, play or something. Yeah, yeah well, I, I saw the other day, it's like, I'll buy a tablet and you'll get headphones. Yeah. Right? But yeah. it's like, I don't know, I already have headphones. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. Exactly right. But if you had just gone to Fiji and you've come home and I met you at the airport and said, here's another voucher to go to Fiji, you'll say yes. You can't get enough holidays, but you can get enough headphones. Yeah. So that's why it worked. We said to, you know, we did a lot of research and it worked because it was universally appealing to all ages. And, you know, if someone said to me, buy something and I'll give you a refrigerator, I'd go, no, I've got one. Oh, we'll give you a microwave. I've got one of them. Oh, we'll give you a lawnmower. I've got one of them. But if I've just been on a holiday and you offer me another holiday, I'll give you a big man hug and go on the holiday. So that's why it's very, very simple. And for anyone who says to us, look, it doesn't suit our brand, um, I say to them, um, you tell me then anything else that you can buy for less than $100 that's worth $1,000 or more that does suit your brand and you can hear crickets in the background. The only business I've knocked back, we've got hundreds and hundreds of businesses doing this, but um, the only business I knocked back was a former client of mine who's a funeral parlor. And he rang me and said, this holiday thing looks all right. I said, are you on drugs? (laughs) <laughs> you said, what do you mean? I said, mate, I cannot see the headline. Let us burn your relatives and we'll give you a free holiday. I just don't think it's very tasteful. You went, oh, okay. Yeah. What about petrol saving? No, no go away. Just yeah. go away. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd love to give, be a little cheeky here and, and maybe even ask you about my business and how I could use it. I think mean, yeah. that would be quite cool for the audience. Yeah. Because um, a lot of my clients listen to this as well. So I work with my clients to produce three months of video content in 45 minutes of their time. Yep. Um, how I do that is I meet with them weekly, fortnightly, and monthly. We film a conversation like this, yep. but it's planned out. We put them up on a podium, talking the best about the business, struggles, desires, pain points. I then go away, find the best snippets, and that stuff goes viral. So we've had 3.9 million views and 138,000 views on just one video. Wow. Um, what we do is essentially take that golden nugget and edit it up to be the good stuff. They rock up as talent, yep. and then we do the rest. Gotcha. The packages that I have on that is, um, so hour of pre-production, hour of filming. Um, I have a 10 videos, 15 videos, or, or 30. Yep. Um, that'll give you three months of content. So at that 30 package, that's probably where I have the most margin to do this. Yep. How would I implement this in my sales process as, okay, cool, if you come on board at the, at the 30 and, yeah, do the filming, like this is how I'm thinking of it in my head. Oh, you'll be so tired after the filming, I'll give you a holiday. Perfect, perfect. Uh, yeah, but I'd love to get, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I mean, you've nailed it. There's not much I can add to that because it is you buy, you get, not you buy, you might win, okay? So, therefore, absolutely. And because you're dealing with uh, price points that are under $5,000, I know that you've got different options. That yeah, well, I've got, I've got packages from 500 to up to 80 grand. Yeah, I know, yeah. but most yeah. of what you're saying with this particular format yeah. is probably yeah. most of them are going to be Yeah, about five. Yeah. So I say to people, look, if you're selling something for maybe under 10 grand, then give it away when they buy that. Now, whether it's a refrigerator or whether it's your uh, video services or, or whether it's a loud suite or whether it's, you know, pill cleaning or whatever it might be, then yeah. But if you're selling something that might be um, for a big ticket line, so therefore it might be a motor car, for example, give it away with every test drive because you know that for every test uh, 10 test drives, you close three sales. So if you pay me three times $97 mm. and you, uh, sorry, sorry no, if you pay me for 10 test drives and each one of those test drives, this yeah. happens to be one of the bouncers. Yeah, so, yeah, it, so therefore what would happen is that, you know, people would come in and you go, listen, just take a test drive and I'll give you this voucher and have a free holiday. But I know as a car salesman, I'm probably going to close on average three of those test drives and I've just sold three $50,000 cars and I paid out 10 times $97. You got to do that every day of the week. So, yeah, we have people who are home builders, uh, display homes. Uh, we'd say to them, well, why don't you just have a tapas dinner 
and invite anyone who's interested in buying a home to come along. And when they come along, you give them some little sausage rolls and frankfurts and a nice glass of wine. You do your spiel inside your display home, so they're experiencing how good it is. Your display home is five hundred thousand dollars. This is a real case study, by the way. Yeah. It was in Melbourne, yeah. and so this particular guy got nineteen people turn up because he gave away a holiday. Three of them on that evening committed to a new home, and these new homes were five hundred and fifty thousand dollars each. So he gave away 19 times $97, let's say 100 bucks. So he gave away $1,900 that cost him in their holidays, and he took in 1.5 that night. <laughs> I did it clicked in my head right now. People, they already want the product, so they come because they're interested in property, right? Yep. The holiday is what gets them over the line. It gets off the fence. Off, off the fence. fence. Right, yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, off the, look, and, and that's it. I mean, it's a persuasion tool like no other. Um, and that's why we call it the Happy Meal Toy. Again, six kids, they're millennials these days, they're too old for little toys, but six under 12 at one stage, and McDonald's got about $6 billion out of us because of the toy. So it's the same thing, is that what you're doing is that you're giving them a, a very attractive um, persuasion tool that hopefully will influence them to get off that dash fence. So this particular guy who had this you know, building business, I just said to him, look, if you say buy a home and I'm going to give you a free four-day holiday, it'll fail miserably. You see, the thing is, is that the building society thing back in those years, it got so big, we created virtually a travel agency within the building society. So in that instance, yes, when they got their home loan for half a million or a million, depending upon what they got, they got airfares, they got cruise tickets, they got rented cars, they got the whole box of dice. This is not the same uh, all-inclusive program. This is free accommodation. Okay. So therefore obviously whoever gets this has to travel there. So I say to someone with a big ticket that's going to be like a home, look, don't think it's going to persuade someone to give you half a million dollars because they're going to get a four-day holiday. That's not going to work. But what it will do is it will be the lead generator from heaven that you just could not believe exists. Because if you say to someone, just have a Zoom call with us for 45 minutes or come into a tapas dinner at the display home and I'll give you the holiday based on you know that your hit rate, your conversion rate is one in six or one in 10, do it. Well, my mentor, um, uh, we are talking about in the car, he owned um, largest timeshare businesses in South Africa, Pacific Club. They they were renowned for that. Yeah. Rock, up to our, rock up to our webinar, we'll give you an iPad. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That so, stopped working for a period of time, but and it's because of what we went into, well, I have an iPad, oh, it's not worth me sitting there for an hour and a half. And it became a joke in a sense. Yeah. But this yeah. is different. It is. And we have insurance companies. Um, it, it, I know you can say the Greater Building Society was a mortgage broker, but individual mortgage brokers who deal with lots of banks, um, they use it as a lead gen. So therefore they say, look, just have a 45-minute health check on your home loan, Zoom call with me, and we'll give you free vacation. So they know that they will get it. And what you do is you pre-qualify those people. Well, there's so many, well, there's so many business owners that say, if I could only get in front of the right customer, then I can close them. I know when I get in front of the right customer, I close at 90%. Yep. 90%. Yep. yep. I, you know, sales is something I love. Yep. I'm the same. All I've got to do is get in front of the right yep. people. Well, for you, it may well be, if you've got a massive close rate like that, then for you, I would suggest you give this away purely and simply with a 30-minute call, discovery call, call it what you like, because in your instance, and, you know, um, depending on volume, people... Sometimes don't pay $97, so, they pay less than that. Yeah, you, you said it before then, if you're giving it away on the phone call, how do we get away from the price peaks? So, like, how do we pre qualification? Yeah. yeah so, right. what, what we do is that um, we would make sure that they go to a landing page, and on that landing page, you would ask the questions that you normally would ask to work out who's going to be a tire kicker. So, in your instance, you'd make sure that, you know, They've got teeth, they've got a job. <laughs> um, and, They're not taking the pillow in the airplane. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, even in the Facebook campaigns, when anybody comes on board with the free holiday program with our thing, um, uh, and by the way, it's Fun Escapes, it's called funescapes.com, but you will get that. In there. Um, but the thing is, is that when they come on board, we give them one month's worth of Facebook advertising management for free. And we're not Mother Teresa, we realise that if we help them with their Facebook ads in that first month and get a bucket load of leads, They'll go through the holidays fast, and guess where they're going to come back yeah, to? Yeah. Yeah. So obviously that's a method to our madness because we know small business owners probably aren't as good Facebook as we are. So therefore, we get them a bucket load of leads. They go through a lot of holidays, and we all went. Right? Um, but we say to people, look, on their Facebook campaign, 
if it was, for example, someone that was selling swimming uh, pool slides, I'll give you a great example. One client was selling swimming pool slides, so he's only after people with swimming pools for obvious reasons. <laughs> so the ad actually says, look, how would you like to get a free holiday? Click here. When they go through the landing page, it asks them the usual questions, like, for example, do you have a pool? <laughs> and if they don't, well, of course, they don't get a call. Yeah. And so you go through the normal, if it's an insurance company, you would ask them, you know, do they smoke? And all the things that you would normally ask if you were face-to-face with someone. And that means that whoever then books a call with you and you're going to get them a holiday is pre-qualified. Yeah. My, uh, and I'm mentioned on my personal he's a mortgage worker, they ran just the sweepstakes on a holiday. And what they would do is Prashant, and Prashant came up with this, he would call and he'd say, um, hey, yeah, look, we well, um, entered the draw for, for the holiday, but um, before we just make sure we, we do the draw, we want to make sure you qualify because of this, and then he'd run through his lead sheet. You got it. And he qualified it. But then imagine if the qualifier is the holiday and he doesn't have to make that phone call, it's just um, automatically. You got it. Sort of look, in some instances, if someone wants a bucket load of leads and they've got a good close rate, despite what I said about contests before, we would encourage them to do it. So, for example, um, an air conditioning company recently, uh, and they were going to get a lot of leads and they get a lot of, they closed pretty quickly. So what we did is we simply uh, ran on Facebook um, a lead form, which is a pop-up campaign, and basically said, how would you like to win an air conditioner uh, and a free holiday? Now, the only people that enter that contest are people that want an air conditioner, of course, so pre-qualifies them for a start. And uh, once a week, he drew it, and guess what? Uh, he was getting about 500 leads a week, so 499 people that would be contacted on a Monday after the Friday draw to say, listen, you didn't win the air conditioner and the free holiday, um, but listen, it's pretty clear that you want an air conditioner, and we've got this special deal. If you take it, we'll give you the holiday. I, I so wanted... you run it as a, that's really cool. So yeah. you run this as a, as a sweepstake, so yeah. people will enter it. And then you go, yeah, look, but you sound like really, I really want to work with you. You know what? Uh, between you and me, I can, I can talk to the talk to the boss, or, or I'm I'm my authority on this. I'll just give you the holiday. It's insane. This particular guy, um, his turnover, he told me, and he's been running it for three months. So he said, look, assuming it goes the same way for the next nine months, we'll go from four point five to nine million right in one year because of this. Uh, we make a few dollars out of it because we're selling the holidays, but yeah, that's the sort of impact it can have. Um, and he said they just get blown away when we say, look, you didn't win the air conditioner and the free holiday, but guess what? You obviously need an air conditioner, otherwise you wouldn't have entered, so therefore you've already glowed in the dark as far as we're concerned. So how about we give you this special, special deal on the air conditioner, and if you get it by Friday, put a time limit in it, yeah. we'll give you a free holiday. He said the close rate is just bang, 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 bang. Yeah. I, know yes, that I love that. It gets them off the fence. Normally, after telling that story, I do the evil, doctor, evil, you know, but... Because it is a bit tricky, but there's no, there's well, nothing wrong is, with it. This is where you've got to be careful as well with who you bring into this, right? Mm-hmm. Because you know that this is a, a, a I don't want to use the word, but like everyone looks for a magic pill, but this yeah. is pretty close. It's too good to be true. This is yeah. pretty close. Yeah. And you got to be there for how do you weed out yourself from people who, because you got to, you've got their response. Like my, my purpose is, you know, I work with a dietitian, for example. She's only one of five people in the world that is peer reviewed to the level of cancer research and dietitian that she's at. Yeah. So, my purpose is I get to impact people's lives because you can literally help people solve cancer. Yeah. Whatnot. Whatnot. That's amazing, right? But us marketers, we're good. We can sell anything. Yeah. So, how do you get away from the to get away those evil people? Yeah. You, you must have a fairly, <laughs> fairly good. Pre-qualifier. Yeah, it? look, and, and um, you know, I'm a few years ahead of you in age, so therefore, if you've been around the block a few times, you can tend to you know, have a pretty good radar for people who are shocky. Um, and so, we haven't had too much problems with that. Um, with anyone who they admit to us that they're going to use it for, you know, purposes that we don't agree with, well, I'm not that hungry for the money. We just won't take it. But seriously, that Tim, that hasn't happened more than a handful of times. Yeah, maybe I'm being a little fast. Yeah, yeah, look, and most people who come to us are under the $1 million turnover, so they're doing 200 or 300 or 500 or 750 or a million. We would have probably about 15% of our sales go to people who are doing twos and threes and five millions. Um, okay. This is not for Harvey Norman um, no. or it's not for Bunnings. Um, what if Harvey Norman came to you and said, I want to do this, would you do it? Um, mm-hmm. I'd be in a retirement home by the time they made up their mind. Yeah. And so the thing is, is that when I've had people knock on my door as salespeople and go, this is unbelievable, this is the easiest thing in the world to sell, 
I say, yes, it is, as long as you can handle um, the objections, because something that looks too good to be true, everyone will say, oh, come on, there has to be something behind this, and you've got to go through the objections. And yeah. um, I've got to explain to them that the only reason this has come about, because hotels realise that if they're running a 30% vacancy factor, there's nothing more perishable than tonight's hotel room for that hotel. They can't sell it tomorrow. It's not like a fruit shop when your banana goes brown, you sell it for half price. You cannot sell tonight's hotel room tomorrow. So you may as well give it up under the radar. Keep in mind, this is not going out to the general public saying you can get four days holiday for 97. Yeah. yeah, they don't know. Betty Banks down here gets this when she buys the lounge suite at the furniture store. She doesn't know that the company has bought it for $97 or less. Yeah. She thinks she's getting a $1,000 holiday. So the, the, the it's a beautiful win, win, win. It's a win for the hotel because they're getting rid of dead stock and hoping that whoever stays there is going to spend money you know, on yeah. food and beverage. Oh, yeah. It's a win for the company because they've got this incentive like from heaven, and it's a win for Betty Banks down the customer because she's got a free holiday. So the thing is, is that I have to say that um, in terms of um, super salesmen knocking on my door, go, oh, this is the easiest thing in the world. So it is, but you've got to really understand the product to actually be able to answer those questions. It's too good to be true because it sounds too good to be true. What's your favourite objection I've ever come with this? Um, the, probably the one that... Um, I get most from businesses. Um, and look, it still isn't easy to sell, don't get me wrong. It still isn't because it's so crazy. Well, yeah. But probably the one is, uh, why can't we go 52? When I give this voucher to my customer, why can't they go 52 weeks a year? I go, they can, just you, you want to pay the $1,000, right? You can go whenever you want. Probably more than that if you want to go to school. The thing is, this is based on hotels giving up unsold hotel rooms. They don't have unsold hotel rooms at Christmas, Easter, and the school holidays. So when you give this to your customer, that customer's got around about, give or take, 40 weeks a year they can use it. And um, if they don't understand that, I just say, well, go and pay put full tariff. I mean, what do you want? Yeah. If something is as crazy as this, of course there's going to be a few conditions because the hotels really are not Mother Teresa. They want to make money. Yeah. That's also where it would be good to sell these things at the B2B space because I'm travelling at least twice a month. Yep. If someone had an offer and said, all right, Tim, you buy my SEO services or um, I'll, I, I need to, I don't have a website, right? So the, my, my business partner is making me a website, I need to give them the content. But if I didn't do that deal and then someone said, okay, you buy a website from me and Tim, I'll pay for your accommodation the next time you go up to Brisbane. Like I know the dates when I'm, because I, I try and organise my filming around a particular networking event. Yeah. So I know those dates and if I can book out a month yeah. in, in advance, like, yeah. It's a no-brainer. And if yeah. someone said, I'll pay for the on next, I, I've done it for a client. He came on board. Um, it was the, I, I love this story. So it was 11.58 p.m. We were doing the sales call. Um, and it was about to go to midnight. And this guy needs to go more, do more networking. I knew there was one in Sydney. I said, Sean, if you come on board and do Google Ads for me and we do more marketing, um, and you say yes, I'll... Um, fly your ticket, I'm, I'm up in Sydney next week, I'll fly you up and um, we'll both go to the networking event. And by the way, this deal only lasts for another two minutes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and that was, he, he, he laughed and I threw that intensive. There you go. You didn't have to Look, do that. Tim, you're spot on. And because you've been around the whole marketing uh, sort of area, then obviously, you know, it comes set in nature too. But for a lot of business owners, they're great technicians, so they're a good dentist or they're a good landscaper or whatever it might be, but they're not real flash of marketing. So over the years, this direct marketing, uh, direct response marketing stuff um, that I've been, you know, preaching is normally pretty good news for most of these businesses because they can't sponsor the Brisbane Broncos. You know, they don't want to spend money on the back of buses or, or, or taxis. And it's been direct response, which, as you well know, um, is based on identifying a problem, aggravating the problem, providing the solution, providing proof, which is normally testimonials, and then a call to action. Most of the time... You know, Jenny Craig, uh, identify the problem. Are you overweight, not feeling good about yourself? Aggravate the problem. You know that someone's just around the corner. You want to look good in the swimsuit. Provide the solution. Um, come on the Jenny Craig program and you'll lose all that weight. Provide uh, proof, which is testimonial, saying before and after, this is what I used to look like. This and then call to action, go to jennycraig.com. Now, most people understand that problem solution scenario, but they don't have number five, which is call to action. Their call to action is not like what you just said then. I'll give you a special bonus, but you've got two minutes. They just go, I'll go to my website. This here provides them with that insane call to action. So therefore, they say, look, you've got a problem, and that might be that um, you know your garden's out of control, and I'm a landscape or lawnmowing guy. I can fix it for you. 
But if he just, just says, then go to my website or give me a call whenever you're ready, that's nuts. Call me by Friday. Has to be by Friday and you get a free holiday. It's rocket fuel, rocket fuel, which is what you did. You got two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we had a good relationship enough for me to do that. So that's yeah. fun. I think that's a really good spot to, to leave it on, but I've got a, a bunch more sort of quick fire questions and we'll get into also, um, you've got a really cool offer for, for our listeners as well, so thank you. Um, one of these questions I love is, um, Walter actually gave this to me last night, I wanted to ask you because I think it's quite profound. Well, I've asked you a lot of questions today mm-hmm. and you've been on a lot of podcasts as well. Mm-hmm. What's the one question you wish someone asks you about? Uh, you mean work-wise or just life? Just life. Just life. Anything. Any, what's something that people don't ask you about? Um, that you wish you could talk about more? I'd say probably, I mean, and it's not so much that I wish that I could talk about. I mean, as you can tell, I can talk out of water. So therefore, yeah. you know, the podcasting and the webinars and stuff are no challenge to me. But I guess the the question that's not asked, and not just me, but I'm sure most of the, you know, the people you come across as well, is um, what they think is the most important thing in life, you know, and yeah. and I know that's getting a bit woo. No, I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it's it. getting a bit woo woo, you know. The woo woo stuff is good, and it's woo woo and cliche for a reason. But but these the, the answer to this question is going to impact at least one person. So I love that. Okay, yeah. okay. well, um, I've got six millennials, and of course, until they get a mortgage, that is the old fart that they don't listen to. Once they get a mortgage, well, Dad's that marketing expert. He might be able to help me make some more money so I can pay for the kids' schooling or the mortgage. So uh, out of my six kids, I've got, you know, a couple of them who are married and have got mortgages, and so they knock on my door and ask for Dad's wisdom all the time. The others who are more likely in their early to mid-20s, it's like, oh, what would you know, Dad? You know, so it'll come. It'll come. Um, but the question, I guess, that I'd probably love to be asked from time to time, and that is, uh, who would I suggest that anyone hangs around? Okay, because there's four million mentors out there. There's just now from Anthony Robbins through to you know Jim Rowan and all that. Um, And my answer to that would be if someone said to me, you know, who are the group of people who you would recommend that we hang around? I would say the group of people are people who say, why not? And I'm not trying to be too philosophical about this, but um, I've enjoyed hanging around people who say, why not? Yeah, let's give that a shot. Um, if you hang around with most left brain people and they're more likely going to be accountants and operational people, they'll go, why? Why? And you go, oh, get me out of here. You know? And um, we produced... Uh, that's market as well. Yeah, it's a exactly. yeah. And then we go to the CFO. Well, why? Got, yeah, so ready, fire, aim. You know? So anyway, the CFO is ready, <laughs> aim, <laughs> over six months, <laughs> fire. You know? <laughs> and, um, and although I'm being sarcastic to make a bit of a joke out of it, the thing is obviously you've got to make sure you've got all your you know, ducks in a row and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, the ready, fire, aim people are good fun to be around. And I guess the best example of that was is that um, I had a stage back, uh, you know, quite a number of years ago, 20 years ago, where I lost $2.2 million a week. There was someone that was working for me and um, uh, did you want to check that or? Did you want no, to, no, no. There was someone who was working for me who unfortunately made a big printing mistake. It was back when we were producing all the bubblegum cards. So we, had, we took the you know, trading cards for Batman movies and Disney movies and rugby league and AFL. And I was over in America and when I came back to person that made this printing mistake, I had 20 staff at the time, said, look, we printed all the wrong numbers on the cards. I forget what it was now, Beauty and the Beast or that, but anyway, it was 2.2 million in a week and lost a house and all the stuff that went with it. And as it turned out, my only comeback was to get the rugby league license. And as it turned out, um, just on the eve of when the bank was going to close me up, I got the license on that day. You know, the guy upstairs was very kind to me. I'd said a few words to him and he came good. And uh, we made all that $2 million back in one football season. Um, we handed out samples of the rugby league cards through the Sunday papers, and, of course, the kids got the samples, and that pester power kicked in. Mummy, mummy, go to the news agency. I want to buy the $2 pack of football cards. And so, you know, we sold gazillions of these football cards, and I paid back all that debt in one football season. And I had made a promise to go upstairs. I said, if I can just get back on my phone. I went to church one morning. I just said, look, Aside from stealing the money out of the poor boxes, <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, I said, any chance at all, you can give me some sort of side to make a comeback. Well, as it turned out, I got the football card license. We made all that money back again, and I had to pay back. And so I produced a TV show. And the best, you know, I'm not mild. Anything I'm going to be involved in is generally wild, not mild. And this TV show was called Dreams Can Come True. 
And uh, I knew Mal Meninga, the footballer at the time, so I said, is there any chance you can help me put a pilot together? There was a little boy in New Zealand whose father, unfortunately, was not a very nice person and left him and his mum in a caravan. And this little boy just lived for the day that one day he could meet Mal Meninga. Well, guess what? Mal Meninga jumped in a plane with me. We flew over to New Zealand. Mal took him to a football game, right? Tears, the whole crowd, I mean, you know, the, Everyone was crying. I think Mal was crying as well. We took that into Channel 10 and said, this is a sort of nice TV show we'd like to make for Australia. There's too much kill, rape, name and destroy. And they bought it. And so we ran a series on Channel 10 on a Sunday night um, called Dreams Can Come True. We rebuilt houses for people who didn't have houses. We took a little wheelchair basketball athlete and took him over and he had lunch with Michael Jordan. We had Steven Spielberg involved, Sylvester Stallone, George Lucas, and the, the X-Files people, and Paul Hogan. I went, oh, no, no, no. All of these people came out of the woodwork. As soon as I asked them, could they help? They said, yeah. Guess that, what, that TV show was put together by five people. That's all we had. There was myself and four others. We called ourselves the Dream Team. We had no clue what we were doing. Right? There was one of us that had TV experience and it wasn't me. It had 1.5 million viewers every Sunday night. That's bigger than um, Australian Idol, by the way. Um, so therefore, it went... It went very, very well. I did the right thing by the guy upstairs because he looked after me. But guess why? Because I had people around me who said, why not? When I would say to them, listen, um, is, is there a chance we can get Steven Spielberg to do this? Instead of them saying, oh, come on, why? They'd go, why not? And I'd say, good, you get Spielberg. And then we'd say, well, we've got to build a house for this person. They don't have a house. We've got to give them a house. Who's going to talk to Master and Holmes? Um, they'd go, why not? Live with me. So this TV program with all of these massive superstars and we built houses, we got motor cars, we dropped food parcels in the middle of Australia to the Indigenous people, all sort of, we needed jumbo jets, you name it. It was put at the end of the TV show because Channel 10 said to us, you've got to run your credits for 50, uh, 50 seconds. I had to make up friends' names. We only had five people to roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's the other thing because the people who go, oh, why? They overthink all the details and then Bingo. they don't do it. Bingo. I got Jim Primmon on this podcast because I just emailed him. Bingo. Why not? Bingo. So many other people go, oh my God, I have to, I'd have to do this and this and this. No, it's up, overcomplicated. Same thing. Yeah. You just reached out to Jerry Seinfeld. Well, you know what? People say that to me. How the hell do you get Jerry Seinfeld? I said, this thing called Google. I don't know whether you've heard about it. Jerry Seinfeld's manager. Bang. And it was George Shapiro. He was in Beverly Hills. Hopped on a plane, yeah. Yeah. So and that's, then the, that's the other thing, right? You hopped on the plane. So a client of mine, Stefan Thomas, business networking for dummies, he says the real opportunity is most people won't bother. You got it. The yeah. opportunity is most people won't go the extra mile, quite literally, to fly to Beverly Hills. They'll go, oh, I could do it all on phone and email. No, no, no. Tim, you know that 95% of the world's wealth is held by 5% of the world. <clears throat> and the reason is, is because 95% of the world clock off at 501. Okay, so... The way that when, when I look at, even when we give this to businesses, this holiday break, this is a money tree, okay? They do this properly and they join the dots. In other words, just to do what we tell you to do. We've done this for a gazillion times, right? So if the doctor sells you to, tells you to stop smoking, just, he knows it's not good for you, right? So, uh, I, I can tell you, there's a number of businesses that grab this money tree from us and they just decide to give it to their daughter-in-law who's a web designer, you know? Um, and guess what? It fails. They've got, the Happy Meal toy from heaven, but they still find a way to screw it up because they overthink it. And I just, I know really far aim, I'm joking, I mean, we don't preach that people should do it, but that philosophy of just roll your sleeves up and do it. And, you know, what I've found is that there's no cure for lazy people. There's just no cure for laziness, except if they go in the army and they get still birds kicked up the backside. But a good portion of people out there are not going anywhere because they clock off at five. You Seriously, if you own your own business, you can't clock off at five. I know we all want to scale and we all want to do the four-hour work week and all of that, but seriously, you can't clock off at five. Yeah. I do 2 a.m. nights, 4 a.m. nights, and someone was telling me, how do you do that? Like, a friend of mine was like, I, I don't know, Tim, I'm lacking ambition. I see you flying around the place and at 2 a.m. And I, I said to him, I said, when you work until 2 a.m. because you have to, it yep. doesn't matter what it is, a project or something like and then you look at the time and you didn't even realise it was 2am. That's when you know you've made it. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. And look, I don't think you're right advocating that you know people sit up late every single night. It's just that when you do have to put in, you just have to put in. And but there are many people, despite the fact that it just has to be done by nine tomorrow morning, will still clock off at five. Yeah. And then they'll whinge because they can't buy the second TV or the second car or they can't go to Disneyland. You go, well, seriously, no pain, no gain. Yeah. yeah. And and it, it often gets simplified as put in the work. Yeah. So then what does yeah. putting the work actually mean? Yeah. Well, putting the work means when something comes up that has to get done, it's not about time, it's about getting the thing done. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. sometimes that means you have to go the extra mile. Look, I joined a club over in America pre-COVID, um, uh, or as you've been BC. saying, BC, BC, I love that. Yeah, before COVID, yeah. BC, I love it. Um, and it's uh, Joe Polish. You're familiar with Joe Polish, okay? So he runs a thing called the Genius Network. And uh, it's not cheap, it's, you know, 25K a year US. And by the time you go backwards and forwards from somewhere like here, Phoenix, uh, to Phoenix, Arizona, it's a 50 or 60K investment. Um, and I had to do a little speech. He gives everyone the opportunity to put their hand up if they want, uh, to do a little 10 minute speech. Now you're in front of Russell Brunson and you're Anthony Robbins and you're, you know, you're, you're yeah. cool kids at lunchtime, you're Frank Kearns and what have you. So you can imagine. Cool kids uh, at lunchtime. I gotta put, I gotta put my hand up. I'll take that 10 minutes. <laughs> um, and one of the questions was that, and of course I do the Seinfeld thing because that's going to get attention for yeah. it and so forth. But, um, uh, as it turns out, there was a question that was asked like that. Uh, and I brought up my little philosophy about hanging around people who say, why not? And, you know, after I came off my little platform and we had lunch and there was, you know, as I said, a lot of the cool yeah. kids at lunchtime were there, your Frank Kearns and your own diocese and your Russell Brunson's, um, everyone resonated with that. And I can tell you that everyone in that room, and they were all pretty big hitters, um, yeah, they lived by the philosophy of hanging around people who say, hey, why not? Well, yesterday, prime example, we put on a event of 30 business owners. I had filming in Melbourne from, so I missed the event, but I had filming in Melbourne from 12 o'clock till two. My fire was at three o'clock. I had to book it to the airport. Yep. I rocked up to the dinner with my suitcase and everyone's like, oh, what are you, you're moving into the restaurant. Because <laughs> <laughs> you hadn't been to the hotel. I had yeah. been to the hotel. Yeah. I checked into my hotel last night at 2 a.m. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Because I wanted to hang around. I knew you were going to be there. I knew jo Johan was going to be here. I knew Jace was going to be there. Yeah. All right. And it's not even, a tacky it's just that's who i am yeah like, it's a no-brainer but someone else wouldn't they go oh i don't know i got filming that day tim like oh i got to no um what you just said then made me think of another thing that i keep on boring, yeah. boring the kids with and it, it's a jim Rohn uh, statement i think and that is show me your friends and i'll show you your future and you know drug addicts hang around other drug addicts that's just the way it is you know and positive thinking people who don't clock off at five o'clock, tend to hang around positive thinking people. And that's what you just said about last night, um, because it was a function where there was, I don't know, 25 or 30 people who are mostly coaches or speakers. And guess what? I think you would have walked, I, I know I did, walked away with three or four new connections that could make each one of us a good amount of money. Yeah. yeah. So show me your friends and I'll show you your future. It's a very good statement. I think it was Jim Rowan. Yeah. Awesome. I did invent a question like that. I just yeah. want to point that out. Yeah. I steal all the other sayings from other people. I do love that on the internet. Yeah. I, I just sort of, they go, if you can dream it, you can do it. I go, that was Walt Disney. That was not you. <laughs> that was not you. <laughs> I have a dream. I have a dream. I, I saw this person, um, uh, they, they all, they, people do it all the time. They steal theories from other people and claim it. I'm like, hang on, mate. I, I, I looked at that in a marketing text. That's not yours. The other ones I love are the selfies because, um, yeah. like, I, oh, the, I, the, I, I seriously did work with Cypher for three years. Okay. So therefore, uh, none of mine are selfies. It's all me and him behind the camera or in a yeah. meeting or this out there. Obviously, I took a million photos. Genuine stuff. Yeah. Because I wanted to milk the photos. So yeah. I just told the cameraman, the photographer, if I'm with him within a yard of him at any time, you're going to try because I, I knew I could milk it thereafter. Um, but I love these ones where they stand next to Schwarzenegger or whoever the hell it is. And it's just a selfie. I mean, what the hell? Who cares? Yeah, you know, it's behind it's, the banner with the, the branded logo exactly. of the event. And then they run the, the funny thing is I see them run them with ads as well. Oh, really? I see them run them with ads. Like they'll get a, a photo of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it's behind the banner of the yeah. event that they're at. They're like, look at me, I'm with Arnold. And it's like, you don't know him. You might as well get a cardboard cutout. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but you know, the good thing about you and I is that we're perfect. Of course, we don't. Oh, know yeah. Any oh, yeah. 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 No, no, no. John, I think that's a really good place to leave it. But, Let's touch on the, the offer that you want to give our audience. Um, if someone wants to do incentive-based marketing, give away a holiday with their product, right? We've got we're selling refrigerators, we're a mortgage broker, we're swimming pool cleaner. Swimming pool cleaner. Yeah, yeah. I want to do incentive-based marketing because now it seems like a fantastic idea of this to you speak. 
What, yeah, what are we doing today? I'm sorry, Tim, I can't tell you. We've run out of time. Oh, yeah, so okay. Okay. Well, I was just okay. yeah. <laughs> Well, that'd be amazing. Is that here? I am, um, you know, obviously wanting to give value as well, yeah. but also I want to flood my product. And they go, no, no I'm, I'm sorry. So for this, this is absolutely the designated. Um, my listeners know this. I've, I've got a, a section here at the end called Pitch My Product. Oh, so good. That's, that's what we're doing. Thank you. You good. Well, well, we won't turn it too much into an infomercial, but probably before I uh, pitch the product, uh, this is a, a book. Every speaker has to have a book. Um, and so therefore when I did the speaking, well, started you know, some years ago, um, universal events were running all my stuff and they said, oh, you've got to write a book or two. I went, what? This <laughs> got to write a book or two. So, uh, I, this is a more recent one. Uh, I haven't read this, but I, I believe it's pretty good. Um, and you think I'm joking. No, I haven't. I dictated the whole thing and had it all put together. And I was doing one of these podcasts about two months ago. My voice is like it is, but of course, the last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't normally have a rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, so I'll make it sound good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. You're a podcaster. Yeah. Um, and this guy on the podcast, uh, just on a webinar, on the chat box, said, oh, JD, I just wanted, you know, your book, chapter, I don't know what it was, chapter five, really changed my business dramatically. And I went, oh, yeah, thank you. And at the end of it, I said to Gail, I'm going to have to read my book because <laughs> chapter five changed <laughs> someone's business. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that night, this is what's called uh, the Avalanche Leads Formula. So he reckoned that whatever formula he got out of this, because there's quite a few things in there, it changed his business for the better. And um, so that night in bed, I'm actually reading the book, and Gail said, she said, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you reading your book? I said, this chapter five is pretty good. Right? So, <laughs> I haven't read it, but I'll say it's a bestseller. I think we've sold 11. So yep. uh, don't, you love, don't you love that too? It's always a new one. Amazon bestseller and, yeah, and it's in some niche, Mark. Uh, I know book publishers that sell that. And it's, yeah, oh, come on. Come on. It's like, you know, selling uh, your candy to Woolworths and going out and buying it back again and then saying, oh, it's oh that's that. what they do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, what they actually do is it's a sub niche category and then they, they <laughs> for 24 hours, they put the book for a dollar. They go to 60 of their friends, hey, can you buy my book at the dollar? I'll even refund you if you want. So then they get like a hundred one dollar sale, which becomes a bestseller. Amazon bestseller. So anyway, this is a uh, Gold Coast bestseller. Yeah. Gold Coast. Um, uh, so this is what's called the Avalanche Leads Formula, and I put lots of pictures in there for people who, yes, well, like me. Look at pictures. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. me. Um, but all jokes aside, though, look, okay. this is all about a formula to get Avalanche Leads. Now, a lot of the stuff that we've discussed is in here. Uh, I think the Turf Farm Case Study and you know the Greater Building Society, of course. But there's a gazillion others. So if you're after some inspiration of how to put together incentive-based marketing, whether it's a holiday or it's a refrigerator or it's a microwave, but don't worry about that. But the actual formula of how to do it, uh, you'll find in this book. So this is free, and to get this, all you need to go, I guess you're going to super the screen, but it's um, salesbooster.com.au forward stroke Beanland, okay, which is your surname, of course. So therefore, it's salesbooster.com.au forward stroke Beanland, but I'm sure you're going to super that. Yeah. And when you get to that page, you'll find out how you can grab hold of the holiday promotion. Gosh, we've had a long time coming to the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, this is just a voucher, okay? I'm holding it like an infomercial. <laughs> so uh, what happens is that when you um, uh, contact us um, at um, salesbooster.com.au forward stroke Beanland, not only will you fill the form in to get the book, but you can also fill the form in to talk to either myself or one of our team uh, to basically explain to you how you can run it for your business. So I know that despite the fact that you might have been listening or watching to this and going, you know what, this is fantastic, but I still need to ask how would I do it? No problems at all. We have a, a number of sales reps that can uh, help you out in that regard. The cost is 50 holidays uh, is the minimum quantity that we, we won't make money if we sell them in fives and tens. So therefore it's 50 holidays at $97. So that means it's 4850. Um, and that depends on volume. So if you want more volume, obviously like anything else, we can you know, we can lower the price. But um, what uh, I suggest you might like to consider um, is that um, at the moment, coming out of what we've come out of with COVID, um, I don't think you'll find a hollow Happy Meal toy on the planet than this. Uh, and not only on the back of this do we showcase, you know, that when you get them, you'll get 50 PDFs, so you can print them out because some people want to hand them across the counter, other people just want to email them. But if you if you think about this, the the ninety seven dollars. It's a four day, three night holiday in Australia or New Zealand. With we're talking Cairns, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Melbourne, Sydney, Darwin, Perth, you name it, all around Australia. And in New Zealand, it's locations like Christchurch and Auckland and Dunedin and Bay of Plenty and Marlborough. And then it's five days in Fiji, or they can choose up to eight days in Bali, Phuket, and Koh Samui. So we we talk. Can you imagine eight days for ninety seven dollars? 
It's pretty crazy. And I guess I'd just leave everyone with this, Tim. If you can think of a hotter Happy Meal toy coming out of the pandemic when everybody wants to get away from the home, then please tell me about it because this is, to me, the hottest Happy Meal toy you could ever give away at this very time. Awesome. John, what was that website again? And yeah, thanks. For uh, it's salesbooster.com.au forward stroke Beanland. Okay, so if you go to that and you'll see that uh, there'll be details about the holiday, you can just fill a form in to book a call. And then also you can just fill a form and get the free book. Awesome. John, I've been Tim, you've been John, we've been talking. Thanks for being the expert that shared your blueprint today. Good, mate. Thank you.